So then, we are back with more understandings from the time of the Second Tabernacle Services, where we find the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation comes from the original manuscripts of the prophets of the Tzaelic lineage. So then, we can understand the time of the end, as per Yeshiyahu the prophet. We find then layers of understanding of the Spring Feast, the Aurum Feast, found in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, the Holy Moadim, or the Feasts of Yahweh, the true Creator. Then, also, parts of Yerushiahu gives us, such as the 61st chapter, indicates then the cities of the Messiah laid the waste from many centuries, then these cities are returning. Another fact is Daniel, the prophet, has mentioned that the nation of Israel would be roaming the earth for a thousand years. Where do we find these very precisely? In the twelfth chapter of Daniel, there is a section regarding then knowledge, then shout increase, and then a time of roaming. Roaming means then the Hebrews would no longer stay in their holy cities. That's why then when we read Yerushiahu the prophet, we find then chapter 1-8 explaining then, and the cities that were laid waste from many centuries then are returning. Explains where the first city is going to be at, and then those who are involved with it, involved with the functions of Ruach HaKodesh. Then there is another situation. When we read, for instance, Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, as we then, reading from the Hebraic understanding, is always global. Now, the global understanding of the Torah and the prophets and the writings also includes the Gentile world. So let's not make a mixture of these because the Gentiles, they don't have the background of a Hebraic culture, obviously. However, when the Hebrews, they read properly the holy instructions, including the Torah, then they can understand, for instance, the first son, Yishmael, what the anointing of the first son leads towards, and also the function of the first son and the function of the second son. Now, as far as is what the Creator then wants from us, they want the unification of both sons. Because He is the Creator and the Designer. So then, let's read then a section regarding Ezekiel. Ezekiel, the third, seventh chapter. Explains then the couple of sticks of authority. Now, it is true that during the time when Israel was divided, there was then the kingdom of the north and south, explaining then Israel and Yehuda. We read these very precisely in the 37th chapter. However, when we are reading from the perspective of the Creator Himself organizing the nations, what do we understand of the first and the second sons? Very simply, you find on the 36th chapter of Ezekiel, you find a section related with and the forsaken cities. On the 38th chapter, we find then the Creator is speaking of Gog and Magog. So let's then understand the global situation, the global position of these holy instructions. It is true, Israel is the second son. Isaac was the second son. And then we find this group of people once again giving directives to this world. Not ruling the world, giving directives to the world. Though the Messiah had his thousand years of rulership. However, this rulership was given as indications of what to do. So then, when we read the 37th chapter, you read in the 36th chapter what was then the cities that were laid away for many centuries. So what then the Creator is explaining is then sections of the global position of the Torah and the Prophets. Now we can have our minds only upon what Israel is doing. Because the Creator is grander. 
he also includes the, the Gentiles with him. Not in the same law, not in the same understanding as Torah, but as pieces of these understanding of the global situation, each on its own place. So then, when we read, for instance, the cities were forsaken in the 36th chapter of Ezekiel, is explaining sections where then the nation of Israel was roaming. As we read then in Daniel, the 11th chapter, and the 12th chapter explains precisely then, then they would be roaming for a time, and then at the end of this time of roaming, then knowledge would increase. Explaining because Daniel was then the minister of finances. He was a tradesperson, the top chief under many kings, and he was then a person responsible for the trade on behalf of the kingdoms. So what is he explaining then? At the end of the time, knowledge would increase for the purposes of trade and translates into computers. That's what China is doing then with e-trade. There is a high knowledge of trade via computer. That's where then knowledge shall increase for the purposes of trade. Because it's from the context where then Daniel was coming from. It is true that there are other knowledges that are also increasing of science and so on and so forth. But what we then read from Daniel is knowledge of trade. And from both sons, who is then the son of trade? Son of trade is Yishmael. So the Creator then, when He's explaining then the organizations of the nations, as we read the 36th chapter, explains the holy cities laid away for many centuries, explaining then the time of roaming. Then the Creator Himself is organizing such as the 37th chapter, you'll find a couple of sticks. But then you'll find the Creator taking a stick and reuniting the kingdom of the north and south under the authority of Yitzhak. That's a authority. The other stick that's mentioning is the stick of authority of the Ishmaelites, the sons of trade. Why? We understand, for instance, in Revelation, then the third part of the oceans are going to become contaminated with oil. And where is then the most concentration of ships we find in the world? You find near then the Arab nations and sections of Singapore, but most of the oil where they are at, you find then in Arabia. So we understand then, at this very moment and time in history, the Arabs, they lower the price of oil. So what does then translate? The Creator Himself is organizing the authority of the first son. It is true when Israel was divided, there were then a couple of authorities. They had then the kingdom of the north and kingdom of the south. And then the prophet said they're going to unite them both under a stick of authority. That's the first son. It's a half of the anointing of Abraham. What about the other half of the authority? Because the Ishmaelites also, they have authority because they are from the loins of Abraham. So then, not only we should understand Israel in what they did, and then the unification of north and south under a stick, the stick of authority of the second son, or tabernacling, giving directives to this world, then you find, during this period of time, you find the first son also receiving his authority of trade. So then, 36th chapter gives us then the cities of the Messiah laid the waste for many centuries. What does it mean? The authority of Yitzhak then is returning. 
the second section, when you read it in the 38th chapter, you find then the Gog and the Magog, and then the time of the end being then translated, so then we can understand this section, and then you have to obviously project these in Revelation. Where do we find then the restoration of the authority of the sons of Ishmael? You find the 23rd chapter of Yerushiahu. And the traitors then are weighty. Their presence, their duties, what they do as people is very weighty. The freighters. Who are the freighters? Those are the Ishmaelites. Let's say, for instance, Yosef. Yosef was sold into slavery and he ended up in Egypt. At some point, the Creator himself has made the second in command. But when he was sold into slavery, what kind of a caravan brought him over to Egypt? Was not then the Ishmaelites? The Ishmaelites are the sons of Ishmael. So they were a very prominent people of the land. They were people of trade. So when we read as far as Israel, it's not only a singular nation, an absolutely secluded place where no others can be part of it. They can be part of it. But there is also the significance of the first son and the authority of this very son and also included in the holy instructions because Yerushiahu has mentioned of them 62nd chapter of Yerushiahu or Isaiah explains then the restoration of the beauty of trade he speaks of the desert people using turbans along the years and centuries the Hebrews they were translating these holy instructions from the prophets and they were editing and they were taking the significance of the people of the desert and then they translated for themselves. So it is important to have in this unity of Israel, but also when the prophets they were prophesying, they were including also the sons of Ishmael. Because when we read the 37th chapter, is explaining the authority of the covenant. You don't have two sticks of authority of the same covenant. Or do we? No. When there was then Abraham made a deal with the Creator, they were under a covenant. A covenant of authority. Given to the sons of Yitzhak. The other stick of this understanding of the 37th chapter belongs to Yishmael. Because they should never be divided. So you find the 36th chapter explaining of the holy cities laid away for many centuries. The cities returning. You find later on in the 38th chapter then Gog and Magog in preparing for the, for the combat of the end. And then you find the 37th in the very center of it explaining then these people they were divided for no reason. But they were divided, united under a stick of authority. So what is the understanding is, he's explaining then the anointing. The anointing of Abraham divided by two. What is then going to be as far as, as Revelation? Revelation, when we read a section of it, we understand the freighters of the earth and the freighters of the earth. The freighters of the earth. You find tabernacle and freighters. You don't find any more kingdoms related with authority. You find freighters. And explains then these movements of these events as we place each of those events on the machine of Ezekiel of the first chapter. Don't we find in the first chapter of Ezekiel these strange machines with many circles? Those are gears of such as a clock. In each of them then making movements of events. 
So then, when we read it in the 37th chapter, then both of them are coming under a authority, a stick, and the second stick is Ishmael. So there is provision for these also. Because the covenant is a authority under a covenant. You can't have two sticks under the same covenant. It doesn't make any sense. So along the years, they were editing and placing the authority under Israel only. And they always rejected the first son, and they shouldn't have. The first son also has his own place. So then, why then the Ishmaelites are lowering the price of oil? Because as they are united with China, later they are going to become people that are going to decide who is going to get oil and who does not going to get oil. Now some say, oh, there are you know, many places in the world where you can find oil, understandably, but not as cheap as from Arabia. So as China then is becoming more prominent in China, where it has 57% of the world's trade only by itself, what do we understand unification of the Ishmaelites and China? China produces the freighters they transport, the Ishmaelites provide the fuel. Does the control of the entire world's transportation system. So then, when we read, for instance, the 37th chapter of Ezekiel, we are not reading only the 37th, there is a global understanding where the Creator positions Israel in its place and the Ishmaelites on their place because of the sons of Abraham. The first son, Ishmael, he was a king. Second son, tabernacling, directives of the nations. Where is the example of directing the nations? For instance, Cornelius, finding the completion of the spring feast, because there is truly no New Testament. We understand there is not a New Testament. New Testament is a pagan understanding of those who were detached from the Torah. So they consider themselves above the Hebrews and above the Torah, and they made it themselves as a new way of living a life without the Torah. It's what New Testament means. But we understand that it was a completion of the first, meaning the spring feast was completed. The covenant remains as it was during the time of Abraham. But then after Abraham, there were subdivided in a couple of sections. The Ishmaelites, the first son, the sons of trade. And Isaac, the son of tabernacling. The first son is producing trade and exchange in this world. And the second son is providing directives. No, do this way because it's going to end up like this. Now, they are not going to indicate what to do as far as this trade. No. The sons of Ishmael, they do trade. As far as the movement of events amongst the nations, they are directives given by those who are from the second son. Where do we find this? Cornelius, Acts 10, or Acts of Ruach HaKodesh, explains when then Cornelius was observing the Hebrews, he was interested why then himself as a man of authority, he was then obviously a centurion, a hundred men was under his authority. So he was familiar with authority. He was familiar with do this and a person does and do the other and a person would do. But what was then caught the attention of this centurion as far as what the Hebrews were doing? From the time of the Messiah when he ascended until the household of Cornelius, how many years had taken place? Fifteen. 
So Cornelius was observing the Hebrews for a long time. He doesn't say that he was observing them for 15 years. They were directing nations for this period of time at least. So there were no Gentiles coming to the faith or then coming to the house of Israel during this time. The Goyim, they were outside. So what went on with Cornelius? Cornelius was observing then the Hebrews, they were praying, they were coming together. And as they were doing, Ruach HaKodesh was active amongst themselves. And, at times, representatives of other nations, they would come and stand by the group of these Hebrews. And then, the Hebrew would come, and then these representatives of nations, they would ask them questions, what to do with the problems of their kingdoms. They would receive answers. And the Hebrew would say, do this, this, and this. Period, turn around, go back to the group. There were no details of what they should do as far as each of those problems. They would give a general understanding, do this, 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 turn around, and then leave. They would return to their countries, their kingdoms, they would do what they were told, and obviously did work every time, and they would return to give them a report. So the Creator Himself, when He speaks, must produce fruit. So He speaks through His people, gives directives to the nations, they return and they give glad reports. As they were doing this for 15 years, it was a long time. They were directing nations. So then when we read as far as Israel, you always find, oh, because they were talking of the Torah, they were talking of this, that, and the other, and the completion of the spring feast, it is true. But the main point is what Isaiah has said. The nation of Israel must lead the nations. And this is what they did. So then Cornelius was watching from afar and every time he was observing these people from other nations, they were coming together and asking questions. They would return to their countries, their kingdoms, they would do and they would return and would have a glad report. And he was fascinated with it. He knew that this person, as he was there, you know, in quote, with the binoculars, observing from afar, oh, this guy is from the East nation, because he had an understanding where these people were coming from. What is he doing over there? Okay, he was asking some understandings, and he would receive some words, would return, and then later on, they would have a report of, it worked. And he knew the Hebrews, they were always concerned with the unfortunate, with the people that did not have much. Charity. He himself, in order to get closer to these Hebrews, because he was Roman, and he could not mix himself with these Hebrews, because he had to worship the Caesar, and if he was caught mixed up with the Hebrews, he would end up in jail. So he had to be very cautious the way he was coming towards the Hebrews. And there he was. He was taking his money from the headquarter. He would receive, obviously, a salary. He would take a portion of his money, would buy provisions and shoes and clothing. He would give these people, the unfortunate, those did not have much, he was giving them provisions. Someday the Hebrews noticed it and simply said, what you have done is known in heaven. Obviously, after he was doing this for many, many, many months, because it was not only a time deal. He was coming then near them, and then the Hebrews said, what you have done, heaven knows it. That's it. Plain, simple, and short. Then, the Hebrews, they sensed a desire for more from this guy. And since he was a man of authority, he had a link with authority of the Gentile world, And that's when then the Creator decided to make a link of His presence of what to do. From a Hebrew 
person to a Gentile to visit with another Hebrew person. So do you understand the bridge that is set from Cornelius? So he was there with the Hebrews. He'd received an understanding. Heaven knew what he was doing. However, you go over there in Iopa, you visit with Shimon. It was a very simple, clear order. Then the Hebrew turned around and gave, go back with his group. Then Cornelius had a delegation of himself, was very a tiny delegation, then he went to Iopa, visited with Shimon, explained precisely what the Hebrew person said to do. Then Shimon perceived that he was saying the truth. Then both of them returned and visited in Caesarea. That's where the Hebrews were at. And then Shimon reported, it is true. What you told Cornelius to say to me was true and I'm giving a report back. Thus the first time Hebrew words were given as directives from an Hebrew Gentile and Hebrew and back in truth. Thus it was established that Goyim could be trusted. Now we understand when the Messiah ascended there was persecution on the land. Then the documents were confiscated everywhere they could find Megillah's holy documents they were confiscated. Later on, when the Greco and the Romans, mostly the Romans, they were doing translations, they changed the flow of events of Acts 10. They made the centurion Cornelius more important than the Hebrew. And it's absolutely nonsense. Let me give another example. In Romans, Romans 13, what do we find? We find then government. So the Hebrews, as they were making those groups, they were the representatives of the kingdom to come government. Try to understand the global understanding of these people coming together and praying. They were the representatives of the kingdom to come government. When the Romans, they were translating they were trying to take away the authority of the Hebrews and placed upon themselves. So then it reads, Let every soul be subjected to the authorities of the kingdom, or then let every soul be subjective to the government. But the real understanding of this in the proper translation is, Let every soul be subjected to the authorities of the kingdom to come government meaning the Hebrews. Do you understand the intricacies of this understanding? So there was, when then the Romans trying to translate the documents, then they made it up that Cornelius was upstairs, he was praying upstairs, and he saw an angel. It is absolutely baloney. He did not have a vision of an angel. He had not understanding of supernatural powers. These are the Romans scoundrelizing the scriptures for their benefit. So let's make this perspective clean and clear and simple. So you can move on to the other layers so then we understand the global sense of the holy instructions including the Torah. And the rest of the nations, they are included. What we find is Cornelius, because he was so eager. What does it mean, the word eager? E-A-G-E-R. Eager. He was eager. He wanted more. The Hebrews were not there asking Cornelius to come to their presence. No, Cornelius was observing them for many months from afar. He wanted to have portion of these understandings. So he came near them. 
Now, we find the translation of the Romans then as such. Then Cornelius had a delegation. Then he had this delegation going there to Yopa and asking then Shimon to come into him. That's Bologna. You don't find Hebrews taking orders from Gentiles. The Hebrews were given the oracles and the Torah in order to direct the nations. They are not there to play around. They have their problems. They say what their problems are. Do this, 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 turn around, return to their group. Now, is up to the representative of the nation either do or not do. But they are eager for answers. If they do what they were told, they return later with a glad report. And this is what fascinated then Cornelius. So this situation of himself asking a delegation to go over there in Yopa and then to ask Shimon then to visit with him halfway, it is Bologna. He was told very precisely, you go there in Yopa and visit with Shimon. There he's going to give you more, what? Instructions. Because you want more from the faith, don't you? They didn't say this. They only said, go over there in Yopa and visit with Shimon. He's going to give you more instructions. They turned around and they left. So he did. He had a tiny delegation of himself and he visited with Shimon directly in Yopa. And then, prior of his coming to Yopa, where then Shimon was at, he was expecting a meal. They were preparing a meal over there, and he was there, and he was praying for a bit, and he slept. In his condition of resting, he saw a vision of this cloth coming down with many unclean animals, and so on and so forth. The Spirit said, go and eat. He said, no, and I have done this not in my life. Explaining then that this Gentile this Cornelius was coming into his presence. Thus he did. He went to his presence and then he was there. He bowed down before Shimon. And Shimon said, please get up. What is the problem? And he explained. He was there in Caesarea and he was doing this, this, this from the part of Cornelius. And then the Hebrew person said, go there and visit with Shimon for more instructions. And Shimon perceives the Creator himself is trusting a Gentile. Do you understand the simplicity of this? Then Cornelius was then in his own quest of converting himself. So can you understand how simple this is truly? With the same simplicity when we read the first son is also very simple. They have their place. And also the second son, tabernacling. The first tabernacling on the land of Cush. Where is then the division from Sudan and then Ethiopia. Where Betha Israel used to be. On the tribe of Dan. That's the first holy city. That's where in Yahanan the last of the Shaliak was at. And the rest of the religions, they are lazy. They only want to eat the corners of the field that the Hebrews have planted. These people, they mouth absolutely nothing. Can't trust them because they're always after their own desires. Later on, I'm going to talk of these more. So please stay tuned. Much more coming up.